Glad to be with you. Today, I guess the key word is with, because we're talking about ways, different ways we can be with one another in the community of Jesus Christ. And um, my name is Dennis. Uh, I, yeah, glad to be the peanut butter around here. That's <laughs> peanut butter in anything goes, goes well, right? And so we want to start today with the words of Jesus and his giving us an amazing statement. This is from Matthew chapter 18. Look at this with me. Truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name... I am there among them. This is why we call this today the law of twos and threes. If two of you agree on earth, there is this limitless power that God makes available to us. And where two or three of us are gathered, there I am, Jesus said. This from the message version. When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, My Father in heaven goes into action, and when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure that I'll be there. Want some of that? So this is the law of twos and threes, and we're using this in the sense not of a law of uh, of, uh, obligation or if you violate this law, there are penalties and so forth. We're using this in a sense that's frequently, um, well, let's see, I jumped ahead there. Um, A law in the sense of a guiding principle, something that is so basic and fundamental, it's what life is. Now, in my world, one law would be Uh, the law of uh, reinforcement, that what we reward tends to recur. And we use that a lot. I'm sure Sharon will be using that in the parenting uh, workshop. Another law that I'll refer to often, and this is literally called a law, the Yerkes-Dodson law, and it's a law that involves a... uh, like a normal curve or what we call a curvilinear relationship, that when I am stressed, when I am challenged, when my experience becomes intensified, it actually increases my performance up to a point. And then it starts to drop off. If I'm too stressed, too intense, too worried, what I'm trying to accomplish will then drop off. That's a law. Maybe you have one or two of these laws of your own. We're suggesting that this is a law that Jesus has presented to us. It's a guiding principle that, uh, as in the sense that uh, Paul uses it in Romans, there's a law of works versus the law of faith. There is uh, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And there's the law of the flesh. And sometimes we have to play one off against the other. Because I'm going to suggest today that there is a law that's confronting each one of us that is speaking powerfully into our world and into our lives. And this is what we'll call the law of of one. It's a law that says, I'm a rock, I'm an island. Some of you know that from Simon and Garfunkel. I'll seek my own interests first and maintain positive feelings about myself as a way of life. My goal today is to feel as good as I can. And please don't you get in the way of that. That's the law of one. I owe it to myself, and I'm worth it, but I owe nothing particularly to you. 
And I'm suggesting that this is a powerfully stated law that comes to us, that surrounds us in our culture. Years ago, when I was taking uh, some voiceover training, our coach said, well, let's try some movie trailers. Okay, you know a movie trailer. In a world gone mad, <laughs> one man stands against tyranny. And so I'm trying this out, and uh, my coach says, Dennis, Dennis, you're, you're too nice. You gotta get in their face. All right. In a world gone mad, one man stands in the face of tyranny. He said, oh, you're getting closer. So I hope I'm not scaring the children. The point is that the law of one is stated powerfully, and it surrounds us all the time. In music, in the arts, in visuals that you... I don't even have to tell you who this is, right? He's become so much a part of the culture that you can tell me right now his most famous line. That's the law of one. Me against you against the world. And you know these guys over here, that's not all of them. But the James Bond men, basically playing by the... Bond is playing by his own rules and the other side is portrayed as evil, but he's pretty selfish and pretty nasty himself, right? The law of one surrounds us with the glamour, the imagery, the songs, the posturing. The law of one is all around us. Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time with the law of one because the really important one is the law of twos and threes. Do I need to do something differently? Oh, sorry. Thanks. I should know this by now, right? <laughs> okay. I'm never without it, you know. But, um, the law, is a, the law of twos and threes is the one we want to pay attention to because it is not really a law as much as it is a celebration. It's a celebration of what our lives become when we participate in how Jesus Christ lives his life, connected to others deeply and generously and committed, committed to the difference we make in the world together as we access the love and power of God directly. Now, the law of twos and threes is worth celebrating because it defines life. And the beautiful thing is that Jesus showed us what it is. He celebrated it too. The law of twos and threes has two key features to it. One is power, and the other is presence. Now, we've got to be careful with our definitions because it's not power for any purpose that suits me because that's still the, power, the law of one. It is power exercised in the name of Jesus. And the whole context of this passage in, in Matthew 18 is reconciliation and personal transformation and the extension of the kingdom of God. That's how his power works. The power of twos and threes. Second, there is presence. Because in the gathering of twos and threes together in the name of Jesus, we are present with one another and still more profoundly, he is presence, present with us. As he said, I am there. The term that's used by God 
so many times repeatedly, the I am. I am there in the midst. And this law expresses the very nature and being of the God that we serve. Because Father, Son, and Spirit are in eternal fellowship as one. And so he shows us in his very nature, in Jesus' own conversations with the Father, in his own delegation of the Spirit, there is a presence of the triune God with one another. And then, we don't have to search too far for examples. When Jesus walked on this earth, and uh, there were those who said in the early years of Christianity, well, he actually didn't walk here. He kind of hovered here. Did you know that? There are people who believe that. Because this earth is so dirty that the divine human Jesus would just hover above it and not leave footprints. Well, do you believe he left footprints? And he left footprints with other people's footprints. Now, you tell me. This is the audience participation portion that uh, you think of moments where Jesus participated in twos and threes. That is, he didn't just walk or hover alone in some glorified, disembodied state, declaring to people the nature of God. He did not do that, did he? He gathered people. Sometimes Jesus and somebody else made a group of two. Sometimes Jesus and a couple of others made a group of three. All right, real quick, you, you give me your best example. When Jesus gathered in groups of twos or threes, when? Woman at the well, group of two. A little louder? You've gone quiet on me. Now, this, this is a group of about 102 or three, and uh, I saw a hand back there. When did Jesus gather with two or three? He talked to Peter. There's a group of two. By the way, that's drawing James and John. Peter, James, and John with him, a small group there. Transfiguration, yeah, yeah. And... Um, Heard of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus? I mean, he hung out a lot at their home. In fact, if you look at the Gospels with this lens in front of your eyes, look at all the times that Jesus is gathering small groups of people around him. Yes, we think of the thousands, but much of the time it's one other person or two or three that he participates in. And so he shows us this law of twos and threes. That is, something remarkable happens when you get a few people together and Jesus is part of it. You have a certain kind of power. That is, there is an access to God. God will respond to you, you two or three. And there is presence. And we learn more and more to just celebrate the presence of God with us. And so we have some of these images here that I shared. Here's a group of two. Who's that? Jesus and the woman brought before him, caught in adultery. She's supposed to be dead now. But instead of killing her, he made a group. The woman and him and all those who are willing to confess their sins. And uh, Peter and James and John and, and so forth. This is, you know, read through the Gospels just from this 
this lens and realize that Jesus is not just showcasing something about himself. He is inviting us into something that becomes a basic life principle, the principle that he himself lives in as Father, Son, and Spirit. He himself lives in as he comes to us in our twos and threes and is right there and is available. This is for us. So by the way, when we're done today, you will have a very practical opportunity to exercise the law of twos and threes. We got a little table set up out there with, uh, with small group sign-ups, and I think I got the times and places correct. I'm willing to be corrected. I am corrected regularly and often. Um, so that's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's out there. And by the way, if God's Spirit is working with you this morning and you think, you know, I'd like to gather two or three people at my place and explore the Word of God or study and pray and, and just participate in this. We got some blank sheets out there too. You can write this morning, start one up. Write your name down at the top of it and give us a suggested time and uh, we'll sign people up. And uh, by the way, those of us who are currently leading small groups, let's sort of hang out around that table close by so people can ask questions because some of our groups are, are different and unique and, uh, well, they all are. And uh, we, can, we can discuss how that works. But this is an opportunity of letting Jesus, living of his own law of twos and threes, penetrate into my heart and relationships. It be can become one of those principles I live by, just like that principle of reward. And, of course, we can find in a small group that as I'm in it and I discover what's there, I am more likely to keep on going. The law of reward. But it helps me move out of theory into concrete interaction with others. And this is, uh, you know, just a, a, a moment of reality. Those of us who've grown up in religious life and Christianity know that it's, it's very easy to theorize about it as opposed to concretely step into it. And so that's what we're uh, encouraging today. It can structure my own life out of isolation into patient, gracious, happy engagement with others. Now, not always happy. We know that. Anytime we actually get connected with people, we don't uh, always find it easy. Let me give you another law. Heard of this one? The porcupine law? Yeah. We are drawn to get close to one another, and then it inevitably gets prickly, and we move out from one another. It's a thing. Look it up. The law of the porcupine. It's not always easy, but it's always worth it. I must also be confessional about my own way of living into the law of one. So we have, to, we have to be real about that too, right? That I naturally seek to live into my own interests. And I can even do a religious version of that. And so when Jesus calls me into this relational way of being with others in his name and in his presence, it brings me out of the law of one. In fact, I would suggest that the law of twos and threes crushes the law of one. It's okay, you won't miss it. Because as Paul says, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. 
And see, this is the illusion we have that the law of one gets me everything. And actually, God teaches us, I want to set you free from the bondage of the law of one. And I want to I welcome you into my world where all kinds of things happen. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free. And we discover that together. So, as the message version has it, a new power is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from a fated lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. Oh, I don't want to think of it that way. Brutal tyranny? Yeah, the law of one. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ is a new power in operation. It is the power of the living God, and it is the presence of the living God. And it has magnificently cleared the air and freed you and me. So let's just receive that today. This is the word of God to us, right? It comes to us in this timeless principle that we're not soldiering on alone, but we are in a caravan together, blessed by the Spirit and the calling of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, this is all your idea, and you make it permanent and true, a law of life, law of human life, that we need one another and we become something together with you guiding us and with you as our example and with you present. We become something we otherwise would not become. And let us, Lord Jesus Christ, joyfully and gratefully enter into your life in your name. Amen.